name is Kathy, and today I'll be continuing the music arranging portion of the music theory material. But before I do this, I wanted to tell you that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Before you begin this section, it's important that you go through all of the basics of theory playlist material. For this portion of the music theory material, we'll be using Sylvia Wood's Music Theory and Arranging Techniques for Folk Harps book. This is a wonderful book that you will thoroughly enjoy. Today we will continue with chapter 14 of your book titled Right Hand Chords. Did you ever wonder why the sopranos always get to sing the melody in the choir? If you ever sang alto or tenor or bass, you hardly ever got to sing the easy part, the melody. You always had to learn the harder parts. Why is this? One reason is that we tend to hear the highest note as the melody. If you heard a choir sing a song you had never heard before and all four voices, all four voices were of equal volume and relatively equal importance, you would probably assume that the highest note was the melody. This concept of the highest note being the melody is extremely important in this next step in making your arrangement sound full and interesting. This next step is to add chords to your right hand along with the melody. Try for yourself to play the example illustrated at the top of 55 of your book as it is written and see if you can figure out what the tune is. doesn't sound like anything, does it? That didn't sound familiar at all. Not really. In actuality, the song was Mary Had a Little Lamb. It didn't sound much like that, did it? This is because we didn't keep the melody on the top when we added the chords. Now play the second example for yourself. Now that sounds better, doesn't it? So you can see in here that when you are adding chords to the melody in the right hand, you must be very careful to use the proper inversion of the chord that will keep the melody on top. Another way of thinking of this is that whatever you play a chord in your right hand, the melody will be played with your thumb. Up until now, we have been talking about chord inversions by what note is on the bottom, the bass. Now it is important to think about, think about what note is on the top of the inversion. Let's start with a song we did earlier in the book called Down in the Valley. That is, that's at the bottom of the page 55 of your book. We're going to add a chord in the right hand on the first beat of each measure. Look at the first three measures of Down in the Valley. They all use a C chord. However, when we add the chords to the right hand on the first beat of each measure, each of these C chords will be in a different inversion as illustrated at the top of page 56. And here is Down in the Valley at the bottom of page 55. Looking at these inversions by what note is on top, which is dictated by the melody, the first C chord has a G on top, the second has an E on top, and the third has a C on top. It doesn't matter if you use three note chords or four note chords, just be sure that the right note is on the top. Now let's look at the G chord. The first G chord, which is tied, so you only play it once, what has a D on top, then a G chord with a G on top and then two G chords with G's on top. Sometimes the melody note is not actually a note that is in the chord. For example, notice that the last G chord in Down in the Valley had as an F on the top, measure, measure 10. 
but there isn't an F in the G chord. That's okay, just keep the F on top and play a G chord underneath it, making a G7 chord as illustrated in the example in the middle of page 56 of your book. Now here's an example. And then here's the G7 chord as indicated. Now here's down in the valley with, with that. Great! Now you try it. The next song from Ireland has several names. Kulin Das Mo Bacalin Bri or My Yellow Haired Lad on page 57 has been written out in two ways. The first way is with just the melody and the chords. The second is an example of adding the chords in the right hand. Notice that there is a chord in the right hand on the first beat of every measure and also whenever a new chord comes in, even if that is in the middle of a measure. Also, there are extra chords in the right hand in the middle of some measures just because they sound good. Now play the second version several times, being sure you understand how the notes in the right hand chords were chosen. Once you understand it, read the first version and add chords to the right on the downbeats and when the chord change and whenever you think they are appropriate. Once you have the right hand and the chords figured out, make a nice arrangement for yourself. And this is my yellow haired lad. Okay, that's the basic melody. Now I'm going to play it. And now I'm going to play it with the right hand chords. Sounds a lot more full, doesn't it? And this is my yellow haired lad. sound like. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists 
so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.